where we took ourselves out of the game tonight without foul shooting. Uh, could have been a very close game when we took ourselves out. Uh, we didn't rebound as well as we should have, and we turned it over too much. I'll give them a lot of credit. Um, they did a lot of good things down the stretch, and we didn't. And uh, they, they deserve the victory. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the, in the second half, the you guys went on a scoring drought about four plus minutes. What did you guys? What were you guys doing that? Kind we're of missing game? shots. We we didn't, we played good enough to stay in the game. We didn't play good enough to win. And then we, you know, you shoot four for thirteen and you get dominated on the glass. Um, you know, if you get the other team to shoot thirty-seven percent of the game, but you give up sixteen second shots, you're not going to win very many games. So you got to give them a lot of credit. They're a great offensive rebounding team. What's the difficulty in, in defending Justin Jackson? Well, like Donovan Mitchell, he's gone from a fairly flat shot to a shot with great arc. The two players I'm most impressed with in college basketball this year, one never gets any credit. Justin Jackson, to me, should be one of the key guys for the Wooden Award. The other guys cannot. You know, they mentioned guys in the draft. I, if I was... If I was drafting, Kanawha would be my top five picks because he's unstoppable. He's a great passer. He's a great shooter. Uh, he's got the mind of a genius on the basketball court. And Justin Jackson and those two guys, I, I put up. You know, I don't know which one I would pick for player of the year. They're both awesome. How much better has he gotten since last year? You mentioned the shot. The arc. Yeah, like Donovan Mitchell and him really had the same type of shot. It was a little flat, and he worked on it, and it was erratic. <laughs> And he's made himself into a great player, good defensive player as well. And you really like to see guys that put in the time and effort to become great players, and he has. And it's great to see them. For them, not for me. <laughs> Did you feel good about the shots you got? Just not I felt good about the shots, but we got to make free throws. That's ridiculous. I mean, it really is. I mean, you, gotta, you can't shoot four for 13 and get dominated on the glass. But, you know, it, it, it was a good game for us. This is a... Surprise environment. You know, I've always said this was the classiest place in college basketball until I met a fan on the way out. Uh, it always reminded me of a class place, but they're getting just like uh, some of the other places now. Great. What, Probably, happened? what happened with that fan? He just got in my face and said something I didn't like. But, you know, he, I take it from the students all the time. You expect it from the students. But from an adult, and then turns his back on me like he's a coward. <laughs> and he is a coward. He doesn't have to take it on but North Carolina is a classy place, and one person doesn't speak for the rest of the people. What do you say? Uh, something kind about me. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Rick, is there, is there offensive rebound? What kind of allows them to kind of play through their, uh, when they get in jams or when they're not making shots? Well, what... Meeks has an uncanny ability. I mean, he's 430 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> 260, and, he, and he's got a great lower body. So he can, very few people, we, we, one of the bad things about our basketball team is we got athletic bodies that run up and down the court. He's like a mash burn. He's got a mash burn, but he, a player I coached in Kentucky many years ago, body, and you can't move him, and then he just nudges you two feet and throws you under the rim <coughs> legally, and, he, and it's tough to keep him out. And the only way to play that is to get your guard to come down and get over him. And um, he's just very, very tough with that. They, they do things offensively that are very difficult to stop because of their offensive rebound. It's, it's an offense unto itself. And it's probably just as potent as anything they do. But they're a great team, and uh, they're going to go a long way. They've got a lot of great days ahead of them. Anything else for Coach? What do you go back with now, Rick? A loss. In terms of, well, <laughs> in terms of work on and uh, taking away, and, you know, you know your team. You know, I, I just feel there's no excuse for bad foul shooting. There's no excuse. Um, you know, I, I just told the players, I said, you know, I'm playing in a, in a basketball league, 55 and over, and I shouldn't be playing at 64, but I'm playing five days. And I'm in the gym every day working on my game, every day. 
And I'm looking in the mirror and saying, why are you doing this? This is ridiculous. But I want the players to see how much time and effort I'm putting into it. You can't shoot free throws like that in today's age. It's ridiculous. You can't, you can't go up to the line and shoot foul shots like that. Nobody can. This is not, you know, you're not Shaquille O'Neal or, or Will Chamberlain where your hands are so big it's like shooting a sock. So there's no reason to shoot free throws like that. No reason. It's just live in the gym. Live in the gym. I'm working on my game day and night now. Anything else? <laughs> Thank you. Good to see you, everybody.